session is just an opportunity um, for a few people to share what they're working on um, and give us um, uh, a quick presentation uh, on that. Some are using slides, some are not. Um, they don't have very long, so um, please let them um, you know, do it as quickly as possible. Um, those of you, some of you may have noticed, actually most of you haven't because you're not sitting at the front. But if you were sitting at the front, you'd have this very nice baseball cap, thanks to our sponsors, Community Builder. So afterwards, if you didn't get one, please go grab, grab one. I'm sure they don't want to take them all the way home. So first off, Jeremy. All right. So how many of you heard of something called Square One CMS? Raise your hands. You, I've talked to. Good. So that makes some of you. How many of you are Joomla site integrators, primarily? Okay. Okay. Oh, I mean, all right. And the rest of you, are you developers? Yes. Programmer types. And do you fit into some other category? You don't know what to call yourself. Okay. So. Let me talk a little bit about what Square One is and then try and entice you to come to my session at, I think, 3.30, the last time slot in the orange room. So Square One is, it's a concept. It's an alternative vision for what Joomla could be. And what that means is I took a copy of Joomla uh, on GitHub. It is available there. You can see it. But I've stripped out over 60 extensions. And you didn't even realize there were 60 extensions already pre-built into Joomla, but there's actually twice that. So, and that includes plugins, modules, components, libraries, all these things. Uh, but I found that as a site builder and a programmer, I often found I don't need some of the things that are pre-built into it, such as web links, news feeds, et cetera, et cetera. And I wondered how easy is it to get rid of these things? And can I have a slightly lighter base to start from? Hence the name Square One, starting from the minimum base that's necessary in order to build up your site. So you don't have extra things. You don't have to tell your clients, oh, yeah, here's the components list, and ignore this one and this one and this one, uh, or disabling them and these various things. Uh, I, I like to have my sites running code, on, only the code that I need. And so Square One is a Joomla distribution. It is connected to Joomla. When Joomla updates, it will update. And I'll go over all this in a little bit more detail. But what I wanted to encourage you to, see, to, uh, to look at it and to see how you might be able to use it for your own needs. Because you're then able to create your own distributions on top of it. And ways that we're going to be working through um, with some of the people that I've already uh, talked to in the community that are interested in helping to create more advanced functionality. But by and large, Square One is a base for you to build your own distributions on top of. And we're going to make that even easier and better in the coming versions. So if you were to take it and look at it right now, the big things you would notice are the removing of all those extensions, but also that you can get them right back. Um, the other part is there's some visual changes. Uh, the, the templates are a little bit different because actually they're all gone. And so you have a very minimum base template. And on top of that, in the back end, you have a new administrator menu. And I, I want to talk about that more during my session. So all of these things converge into making a, a unique Joomla distribution that's still 99%. I did a test. The amount of code in square one is still 99% Joomla. There's 1% difference. But when you install it and test it, you'll see how much of a difference that makes. So I encourage you to come to see my session, at, not this time, but the time after that. And uh, if, if you aren't able to make it there, watch the video, or just go to square1cms.org, check it out, download it, test it. And just if you find it of any value or interest, get involved, just even just to say, hi, I like it, or I don't like it, and that'd be great. So thank you. Five. Five for this one. PowerPoint. You saw it. I was looking for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry? Oh, you have the timer. 
Did it start? Not yet. Good. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I am now quite very excited to present to you uh, a new way to build web applications that we are using for Community Builder 2.0. Right now, you know the traditional design, somebody specifies, then somebody does a design, and somebody implements. Very well-known process. You implement sometimes in MVC, even often. But there is one issue here. All these things are unrelated. So sometimes implementation doesn't correspond to specification, or the design is different. And you don't have any method to know if exactly corresponds to the specification. So we spend some time to think about how to remove that completely. And to come up with a new process, and we have been doing five years of research at Lightning Labs, thank you for naming our, uh, these talks by our company name. <laughs> uh, we have spent five years to see how the specification can go directly into the result, without design and without implementation, but with a layout. The great thing about that, it's related. If you change a spec, the result changes. And that's a completely new way of building web apps and apps all together. So no implementation means no PHP code, no script, JavaScript, and no SQL queries. And I hear you saying, aha, really? Wow, that's interesting. So we came up with acronyms. AHA is Automatic Homogeneous Applications. And WOW is Web Optimized Workflows, which is the, the reply to that question. So let's compare. Right now, in a classical MVC design, we have model view controller implementations, helpers, JavaScript helpers. It's not hierarchical, it's not agonistic. There's a lot of copy-paste code, lots of layouting, and it's not a formal procedure. Aha, wow, on the other side, we have a specification only. It's hierarchical, it's MVC, database agonistic, language agonistic, no specific code, or very little if you really need some, and it's formal. I got your attention. So I have two minutes left, right? Good timing. Let's start with the model. We decided to use XML because it's a formal language which can be validated. Very interesting. Model consists of a table, and if you want to have some code of a class. The table is defined in a data bras abstraction uh, this way. And the interesting thing is that this installs and upgrades the database automatically from the is, is state, current state, to the should be state here. Which means no more queries to do, uh, alter, and create tables and add things into the database. It's uh, automatically comparing that state to the other one. We had a very interesting talk yesterday, and this is being currently considered for inclusion in Joomla 3.0 already. Because this part we already use in Community Builder since two years already. Controller, how can, how can it be simpler? It links an action with a model with a view. Very simple. The view itself, here we have a table browser with fields which are taken from the model. And that example of a currency table results automatically in that output with zero PHP code, zero JavaScript. You have the paging, paging, you have displays. If you add search field, you have search field, filters, everything is there in the Joomla look without any line of PHP code which is specific. And the best part of it is that we have used and tested it extensively in CBSubs, CBSubs 2.0 uses already aha wow. Okay, 6,900 lines 
May I have one minute? Thank you. 6,900 lines of specifications only for the core CB sub CB plugin. I say only because that specifies 41 controllers, 50 views, 56 models, 397 queries and sub queries for the backend, and allows to manage 650 settings. It's about twice to three times bigger than Joomla settings, and it's about 10 times bigger than CB settings itself. It's huge. Very, very parameter, and that only with 6,900 lines of specifications code. Best of it, we are, go we are using Bootstrap now, and we are going to use it in the front end as well for CB 2.0, which is coming out very soon now, after all those years. One more thing, it doesn't do only that. It's database agonistic, it has a formal data set, query specifications, it does inheritance, it does permissions of Joomla, access levels, Handles 100% of the admin interface, toolbars, menu, online helps, you name it. And it's event driven. Thank you very much. That was five years of research in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it is in, in CB 2.0, it's GPL. You will be able to uh, build your extension on it, and maybe one day it will be in Joomla. And you will be having the slides on Joomla policy because they were quite fast. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hi there. Hi. Um, I'm uh, Jens Christian Bang from um, the company Already On. We are from uh, Norway. And uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, the member system shoe. Um, in Norway, we have a lot of uh, associations. Uh, an example is uh, I listen to the radio around Christmas, and they have a Christmas tree organization for the growers and a Christmas tree organization for the users of Christmas tree. So they have a the discussion. So we have, in Norway, we have organization for, um, for everything. So then, of course, we needed a system for uh, that. Thank you. So, SHU is an association management system. That means that we are managing the members in an organization. Uh, our customers or clients are unions, labor unions, or political parties, or uh, ordinary member organizations. So, I'm going to show you um, some of the screenshots from uh, our, uh, our system so that you can see how it works. We presented this um, last year, but since last year we have rebuilt the whole system uh, and we have uh, added a lot of functionality. No? Ah, finally. So here you see the dashboard where you uh, start the application. Um, what we're seeing here is uh, all the members uh, that you can search for. It's predictive search, so we can start writing name of a, a member, and then you will get a, a short list without clicking enter or doing anything. You can just start uh, writing, just as in uh, Google. Uh, we use this uh, ribbon menu uh, so that um, you will have all the functionality for that page uh, at the same time as you open the page. Uh, we also have um, one uh, page or ribbon for uh, where the members belong, because this is, uh, uh, is for national organizations. So here is for, uh, for the local organization that it belongs to, and then you can go into a local organization, and then you can see all the members that belongs to that organization. This is actually for um, a labor union, so here you can see all the employers and all the workplaces, which don't have to be the same. Uh, we also have um, uh, several groups, so we can have um, uh, 
uh, other uh, categorizations of uh, members. Uh, we have report and we have something called dialogue. So we can search for all the members in a part of the country or in a part of the organization and send emails to all of them with a few clicks. What's new uh, from uh, this year is also the search panel that we have here. So we can uh, search for uh, members or from districts or for uh, whatever you want to put into this, uh, this panel. If we open one of the members, it looks like this. So here you see that it's, um, we are still, this is a pop-up window. So you will see um, all the information about the member and you will see more details, uh, access for web and uh, notes that you have uh, done about this uh, member. Uh, since last year, we have made three new uh, apps to uh, show, and one of them is my page. The other one is a course and gallery uh, application, and the last one is a contingent and invoice part of the system. So, if you look at uh, the my page, uh, then you see that uh, the member can log in and change information about. Uh, his uh, own addresses or phone numbers or whatever. And you can also subscribe to courses or gatherings or uh, see uh, his uh, invoices or if the invoices is paid or not. So if we go to the course and gathering application, here you see we have made a gathering or um, a course. And uh, as soon as this is uh, activated, the members can go into my page and uh, start subscribing to this. And then they will see all the subscribers um, at uh, one of the subscribers uh, uh, folders in the ribbon menu. We can also uh, add what kind of um, uh, form they have to fill out before they can. Uh, 20 seconds left, yes. <laughs> Yes, and then uh, contingent and invoice. Here you can see all the invoices that they sent for one member. And this is also connected to the OCR files that you get from the bank, so that you can upload this file and get it uh, automated to see if they are paid or not, or uh, if the payment is on the right uh, amount. So if anyone of you think this is uh, more interesting and want to have a private uh, demo it, just ask me outside. We will stay here to uh, five o'clock today or to when we close. Thank you. Did Michael disappear? Are you there? Okay. Sorry. Michael? Much rather have the logo than the uh, soccer game yeah. as my background. All right, so I'm not a big fan of slides, and I ended up changing my lightning talk at the last minute, anyways. So uh, we're just going to wing it. So um, last week, as I was finishing my uh, presentation for uh, Friday morning, I uh, started playing with some of the new uh, application code, uh, trying to better understand some of it. And uh, basically, what I've got is a working concept uh, that I'd like to throw out there for CMS 3.0 to uh, move the application layer away from using the legacy J application class to the J application web class. Um, for those who don't know about it, it's a, a newer uh, application class that was introduced in platform 11.3 and uh, it, it's uh, more so designed to interface specifically with uh, web applications than uh, before. And it uh, breaks away from some of the uh, clutter in the legacy class. I see a couple of uh, winces in the back like, oh God, not some more change. I've done this in a way that it should be 99.7% backwards compatible. About the only thing that's broken is a specific call to a static method in the legacy class that's going away anyways. So what I've got right now is the site and admin applications working on this and I want to tackle the uh, installation one here soon. Um, the benefits to doing this is we introduce several new APIs to extension developers, to the, to, uh, the core team, anyone working with the application. 
Uh, a couple of the ones that really caught my attention uh, right away were the ability to uh, compress some of the output uh, and to uh, modify some of the body output using native uh, API methods instead of having to hack in, get the objects, hack it out. Um, and the other one, the, a couple more that I got in here, you can uh, check for the PHP headers to see if they've been sent uh, and then if act on that depending on need be. I know sometimes troubleshooting I run into issues with the headers already being sent. And then the last one I've got uh, listed out on here is there's several new uh, plugin events which are available. Um, and over the course of the last uh, day or so, I uh, was tweaking things a little bit more, tying it into uh, JFactory so that this same uh, document object or the same session object or the same config object that's getting set up in these application classes is getting registered all across the API instead of only getting created after the fact and you may end up with a different instance than what you're intending. Um, I've got some code out on GitHub right now, github.com slash mbabker is my account there. And uh, on my CMS fork, there's a, a branch called app30. It's based on the Joomla 3.0 branch that we've got set up now on the CMS repo with these changes. And basically, it, it, I want to say it's phase one complete. Everything is working with all that backwards compatibility except for the one static call which needs to go away anyways. Um, but now that I've got the working concept, what I'd really like is, you know, some others to kind of jump in and say, hey, well, here's a good idea, or, you know, this is crap, let's get away from it. But I want to start uh, looking at some of this code and optimizing it so that, you know, we have a much better uh, web instance. So hop out on GitHub, look at the code, send some pull requests, pull me off to the side here in the hallway the next few hours. You know, I think this would actually be a really cool thing to push in for CMS 3.0. And uh, I'm actually kind of upset that I only started it a couple days ago because otherwise I would have had a little bit more to go with. But, you know, it's a great idea. I think it's something fresh and I want to see how far we can push it. Thank you. I didn't understand a word of that, but it sounded really cool. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Ruth Cheesley. I run a company called Viria Technologies, which specializes in open source technologies, including Joomla. Uh, just as a show of hands, how, how many people in this room at the moment are under 20? Under 30? Wish you were under 30? OK, right. <laughs> Uh, in August this year, I created an apprenticeship which specializes in Joomla. They only do Joomla. I appointed in October and I was absolutely bowled over by the enthusiasm, the interest and the speed at which Chris, my apprentice, has embraced open source technology. I feel like an old age pensioner now. Uh, Chris has never come across open source before he contacted our company to arrange work experience. He now works on Linux systems. He manages his own caseload of uh, a wide range of areas from template design to implementation of large sites since October. He's spreading his wings into coding, writing migration and import scripts, troubleshooting, support forum, and we're hoping that he'll start contributing to the Joomla project in the near future. He's even delivered a well-received session on template design to our local user group mainly because I told him he had to. As a small business, we've also been able to give him the breadth of experience involved in running a business, going to networking, sales meetings, following up, and so forth. Through the success of this apprenticeship, I've been asked by local schools, colleges, and universities to look at how we can encourage and inspire young people in using open source technologies, or at a minimum, expose them to open source technologies at school so they even know it exists. This has involved arranging awareness sessions with local schools and academies, inviting teachers to come to our user group, <coughs> user group setting up viria.co.uk slash students as a repository of hints and tips to help students and graduates get started. Basic things like how to get an online CV, what kind of things you need to be doing, where you can start to learn how to code. We send out a newsletter once a month-ish 
um, and it's been really well received. But what I'd really like from you guys is to hear if any of you have been through this already in your businesses or in your organisations, if you're interested in sharing ideas on how we can encourage and inspire young people to explore open source technologies, and of course how they can become involved in the Joomla project. If you can come and grab me after the session or you can tweet me at our Cheesley, that would be really great. Um, thank you for your time. Frank. Please get this thing working. Yeah, it's working. Okay. Some of us football was not fine. <laughs> Sorry, I'm giving away all your secrets. Okay, you've, you've seen it. Bye! It was <laughs> Okay, um... Okay, um... Somebody else interested in HTML5? Okay, cool. Uh, so, why well, I liked it. Um, first, two persons got me hooked. Angie and Alexander. Just thank you for getting me into it. Accessible, cleaner structure, I think it's future orientated and it's more focused on real content. Um, how can I do that? It just modules PHP and template override, so it's very simple. Uh, which HTML5 segmentic elements are being used? Article, section, snap, aside, age groups, time. So, where we start? Just start at the index HTML, at this thing there, it's just the left column. And this is the override I did. So I just called it Mod Chrome HTML5. Sorry, I just could not think of something else. Um, to be included with the JDoc, very normal style HTML5. So I got two things there just to debug and see what I'm doing. So I said, debug me true, it gives very ugly debugger. Very simple, but okay, it works just to see. You see, this one also has a, their headline, menu type, main menu. So I know, okay, it should be the main menu. Um, which is more important right now is show me. If I put it to true, nav will get a red outline and aside will get a yellow outline. So you see, nav aside. Why did I put it this way? Because now I just say, put this module up, put this module down, and it will still be semantic. I say, go to the other side, and it will still be semantic. Um, breadcrumb, it's not a menu type, but actually I think it's, it's, it's a kind of menu. So a workaround I did, I just said, please use as a class suffix underscore menu to be put in there. And that will work for the breadcrumbs. What about the other semantic elements? Well, I have a bit more for you. So, this is just a working page for my mom. Um, so, this is an article. These are sections of an article. This is the main article. And also got um, a section concerning the article with social media plugins. Um, I even got age group. So, for this case, I did something, something I normally do not do. Um, I said, okay, age groups. Um, I said a page title. Normally, I do not do this. Connected to the menu. And the article title. So, it'll be semantically correct, put together in age group. I uh, got a little bit more. I got time element. Normally, I just strip it away, but because of my talk, I thought, okay, just put it into it. Uh, so, you see there, time, date time. I just strip the long German thing and translated it into a normal timestamp to be semantically correct. And small SEO contribution. I put a rel no follow tag to print pages. There. 
thanks for listening. That's about it. And I want to not just show you some kind of proof of concept. I wanted you to get it and maybe improve it and maybe we can put it in future versions. And I'll just love to hear feedback and to improve it so we all can use it. And just because it's so grabbable. Who's interested? Okay, uh, the demo version code is there if you do not want to download it. And also this TV, let's show you that one. Yeah. Uh, also, who else? Ah, uh, sorry, I cannot hit the bone from inside. Um, so, I would love to have that also in future Joomla versions and to improve it and basically to just concentrate more on the content than on too much code. Thank you. Seconds for, for the government side. Thank you. Yeah. And one more first. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey guys, uh, for I think I know most people in here, but for you don't know me, my name is John Neubauer. Uh, I work for CMP Integrations, and uh, we're a company that does um, Joomla integrations uh, with many different systems, enterprise systems, management systems, and building anything new that's needed to accomplish that. Uh, one fun thing that we've been working on over the last eight or nine months is a process to migrate uh, large-scale uh, Drupal, Drupal, Drupal websites into Joomla. Um, we did a lot of research. I don't think this is something that's been done to any great extent before. Um, but we started out with uh, a site, and this is one of our larger projects, truthout.org. In the United States, this is a uh, a uh, rather large and well-known political publication, online publication. Um, so we we're uh, working on migrating a relatively old Drupal installation to Joomla 2.5. Um, large site, over 200,000 content items. Um, uh, if you know how Joomla works, kind of natively, they have different content types with many different unique fields per content type. Uh, so that was important, a lot of different users. And uh, the other thing was providing security. It was a very old, out-of-date system and uh, not necessarily a fault of Drupal, but uh, just because it was so old, it was getting hacked on a regular basis and, of course, hurting their reputation, hurting their readability and all kinds of stuff like that. So that was an important factor in the project as well. Um, we started out by using K2. Um, we did a lot of research on the different type of CCKs that are available and what we can use, and K2 seemed to offer an architecture uh, or a way it stored data and a way it created articles that was uh, relatively similar to what Drupal does and relatively um, easy to migrate both workflows that uh, the editors and authors had used as well as the content itself. Um, but we didn't stop there. We made a lot of modifications. We've rewritten a large portion of, of K2, um, providing multi-author capabilities so any single article can have multiple authors um, and uh, rewritten, obviously, templates to provide, uh, the K2 templates to provide uh, facilities for that. And uh, we also ended up doing a lot of optimization of K2. Um, and a uh, very large site receives several million visitors a, a, a month. And um, so uh, the default K2 queries and uh, the way it grabbed, especially category views, was uh, relatively inefficient. So we ended up doing a lot of optimization there. For the security aspect, uh, we use Secure Live, which is a security suite. It's kind of uh, used to be uh, largely integrated with Joomla, but lately it's become more uh, CMS or system agnostic and uses just sits on the server level. But it's provided us a great level of security. Uh, since we put this in place nine months ago, we, we went from uh, a site, of course, that's unprotected, getting hacked about twice a week. Uh, and we have not had a successful hack yet or uh, attack yet, although they do <laughs> try all the time. Uh, so Secure Live did a really great job, and, and we're very glad to be able to work with them. Um, so after eight months of uh, working with this, importing data, and, and uh, making sure everything works, we kind of ended up with something like this, uh, which is a, a news site um, uh, with uh, 
several hundred thousand content items, integrates with a membership system for donations and uh, other facilities like that. Um, so that's kind of uh, what we did. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention was some of the, what we see as the biggest challenge to this. Um, we would like to work towards a way to eventually make this as a standalone uh, application or system where any Drupal uh, webmaster or site can migrate into Joomla. Drupal's a great set of tools. It's not necessarily a, an attack on Drupal, but um, there, you know, there's this obvious, um, there, there's obviously a lower level of uh, requirements for the maintainers of the site, whoever's running the site on a daily basis, especially for non-technical users. You don't necessarily have to have your own development team behind you 24 hours a day to just do day-to-day -day operations. It lowers your retained costs and over costs that you have over time and maintenance. Uh, so we're, we're looking at this, and, and one of the biggest hurdles that we see, and this is something that we're still working towards, hopefully, is um, not in the actual migration itself, but in the process before the migration, the mapping of data. If anybody's worked with Drupal, um, there's a... Uh, there's a very radical difference in how Drupal handles data and how Drupal handles content and articles in its database than, than Joomla or K2 or really anything else in Joomla does. Um, and so that's really the biggest challenge that we see in um, creating a, a system to be able to provide this. I mean, right now you see there's a facility to migrate WordPress to Joomla and Joomla to Drupal, if you'd like. I've seen, I've seen those, but there's really nothing that provides the other way. And as a open source platform that really offers potential for um, sites of really any size, uh, we're really working forward to this and looking forward to perfecting this in years to come. Thank you. So we just have two very quick ones and then I have a little video to share. Okay, uh, this is a very quick, quick, quick one. I'm uh, going to ask you guys something. Uh, so you heard about Joomla Gov or not? We are just one year old because it all started here, well, in Holland due to this guy and uh, Ryan and stuff. So we're one year old, so you go check, please, the, the site. Look at your local, local uh, either country or what, and if you see some sites, just put them in. If you have bulk sites, uh, like uh, say a thousand or a hundred uh, uh, government sites, feel free to contact us and we, we will do a big import into it. And um, I'm challenging you, we have uh, 3,000 something uh, sites today. Why not get to 5,000? That's a nice number. So it's your site. Give it. We'll put it. And um, we'll show it. So 5,000, we're okay? You take it? Next year, 5,000, right? Okay. Thank you. This one? This one? That's the microphone. Hi, take. Hi, my name is Hagen. Last year at, what's the name? J and Beyond. I, <laughs> I started a book project and I collected money for sponsorship and maybe a few people can remember that. And now, one year later, we have more than 330,000 free downloads of this PDF. And, it, <laughs> and it's available in, I think, the PDF in seven languages and there are a few more languages coming and I'm looking for translators for Polish, for Chinese, for Farsi and for Portuguese. So if you know people, so it is a mixture. It's not, um, it's not just volunteers, so we also sell uh, sponsorships and we share this with, with all the translators and so far we are I don't know, 30 or 35 people, and it's, yeah, it's, now it is a project. It wasn't planned as a project, but it is a kind of a project, and I hope that we can work together with this Joomla documentation more, and I just wanted to say this, and I want, uh, I hope that I get more, more translators, and yeah, and then a private thing, the website where all this is stored is made with Drupal. Sorry for that. And <laughs> this, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, we, yeah. We have to change that. 
<laughs> and therefore, I need also help. So if you are interested to make a Joomla site from Coco8, contact me. Yeah? <laughs> I have one final one, and I'm not sure. Are they in the room for the video? No? Okay. So I received an email last week from someone who said, I've been working on a new Joomla infographic, and this isn't the final version, but it's pretty close. Um, and you're going to see it here first. What is Joomla? Joomla is one of the world's most popular CMS platforms. Since 2006, it has been downloaded more than 30 million times, with a new download every 2.5 seconds. Joomla holds a unique place in the open source community, being the only non-corporate backed community driven CMS platform in the world. Joomla also implements modern programming standards using object-oriented programming and wrapping things up with a strong MVC design pattern. Let's look at Joomla in plain numbers. Joomla.org has seen fast-paced growth since its beginnings in 2006 and now hosts more than 7.5 million visitors on its websites. The Joomla CMS is one of the most widely translated CMSs with 64 languages currently supported. Joomla has won numerous awards and has one of the most active open source communities with its own community magazine featuring over 465 articles published in the last two years and hundreds of thousands of topics, posts and members in its forum. From 2006 to 2011, there were 111 Joomla Day events held in 34 countries on six continents. Once you start with Joomla, you can extend it with one or several of the over 9,400 extensions available from the Joomla community at extensions.joomla.org. Seeing how about 2.8% of the entire internet runs Joomla, chances are some of the sites you visit every day are run by this powerful platform. So what are you waiting for? Go to Joomla.org for more information and to get started. So I'm sorry they're not in the room at the moment, but that's going to be, that's still not the final version. I've seen about five versions so far in a week. Um, each time it blows me away seeing the new features that get added to it. Um, so um, I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot more of this video and infographics like this in the near future. So that concludes this session. I'll, I'll give a shout. Out.